Hello ladies and gents, welcome back once again to Andy Mancamp's garage. Today, I'm going to be fitting this Chitoro automatic chain oiler to this Honda CB1000R. Now, since I had the Yamaha FZS600, Poly, if you remember that far back, I've pretty much been converted to the world of chain oilers. I've had a chain oiler on every single bike. I think they're absolutely fantastic. And in my mind, there's no doubt they vastly extend the life of your chain and they hugely reduce the amount of maintenance that you have to do on that chain. Yes, they do make the bike a little bit more dirty perhaps, but swings and roundabouts, isn't it? But anyway, now that I've got this stunning machine, the Honda CB1000R, obviously I want to put a chain oiler on it. I'm not really keen on going the way that I did with the last bike on the Yamaha FZ1 and using a Scott oiler that needs me to plumb into the vacuum system of the bike. I'm not really that happy about chopping into stuff on this bike when I haven't actually even put it on the road yet. And that's where these guys came in. Chitoro stands for top up, turn on, ride off. It's an automatic chain oiler. You mount it on the bike, fill up with oil, and every time you start the bike, the vibrations make the little valve inside open up and it oils the chain. As soon as you stop again, the valve closes, no more oil flows. So there's no need to tap into either the electrical or the vacuum systems of the bike. So that sounds proper good to me. I should say that Tutoro actually gave me this for free, so big thanks to you guys for giving me this to try out on the bike. Looking forward to getting this fitted and having some worry-free chain oiling. So in the kit we get the Tutoro reservoir with built-in self-regulating valve and flow control dobbin. We've got 500 millilitres of Chitoro motorcycle chain oil. We've got a selection of mounting hardware with nuts and bolts, funny shaped arms, right angle jobbies, which should be enough for most cases to get this thing mounted on the bike. We've got a priming magnet, a bunch of cable ties, <laughs> whee! It's never complete without the cable ties. Sticky back hose clips for mounting the hose, a length of hose because no party is complete without the hose, instruction manual, and a wash bag because detergents and things could potentially creep into this thing, maybe damage it. So the idea is when you're washing the bike, you stuff this over the top, seal it up so that your oiler stays protected from all of the stuff you're washing the bike with. On top of that, Chitoro have sent me the Profix bolt bracket kit. This is to provide you with a little bit of an extended option for where to mount it with three different size bolts so that you can find the right one, I do that again if I tried, and uh, find somewhere to mount this thing on the bike using foot peg hangers or fairing bolts or just anything that one of these bolts fits on that's in roughly the right place. And then as a last extra, because this bike is covered in lots of lovely, lovely aluminium pieces, Tutoro actually have a rolled aluminium guard for the chain oiler. Slides over the chain oiler, gives you a nice aluminium looking protected because this is ultimately a stone guard to protect you from stones flying up from the road cracking your reservoir but also cool looking reservoir that fits with the look of my bike in particular because next to these real aluminium trim panels this is going to fit right in now you would of course be forgiven for imagining that with a brand spanking new bike and this one has currently got two kilometers on the clock which i think is just from them shifting it up and down the dealership the chain would be in perfect condition and ready for a chain oiler to be fitted but sadly not the case as this chain is actually caked in sticky gloopy brand spanking new chain wax obviously that's got to come off before we can start putting the oil from the Totoro on otherwise we're going to end up with a sticky paste of both of these things mixed together and making a horrible mess of our bike and of our chain and obviously also collecting all the dust and dirt and grime off of the road and making a grinding paste on the chain which we don't really want so i am going to spend 10 minutes he says with a smile on his face cleaning this off i'm not going to bore you with making you watch that obviously if you want to see how i'm going to clean this chain check out the ket and max chain cleaning video in the top right there naturally it's a bit different because this bike is also a bit different with the single-sided swing arm which i am loving a lot but you get the idea of how the chain cleaner will work and i will see you back here when I've got this thing clean and shiny. Well, fast forward half an hour and is that not the cleanest, shiniest chain you've ever seen? Absolutely glorious. So anyway, we can carry on with fitting the chain oiler. So the first thing to think about is where's it gonna go? Obviously, we don't wanna mount it anywhere where the swing arm can hit it because this 
The great big silver chunk of metal is obviously going to be jumping up and down while the bike's being ridden along. It also needs to be vertical, although it can be mounted a maximum of 13 degrees from vertical. So we need a position to put this somewhere where it's going to be out of the way so I can't kick it, but also accessible so that we can get the lid off to fill it up with oil. So I'm thinking roughly about here is probably a pretty good position. Protected by the heel plate there. The swing arm is not going to be moving that much because we're just a couple of inches away from the pivot point and seems almost fitting that it would be above the chain itself. So if any oil was to drip out or if I'm to spill any while I'm filling it up, it's going to go straight on the chain and we've lost nothing. Could of course also maybe tuck it up here somewhere behind the foot peg, but it's a little bit out in space for my liking up there. So I quite like the idea of this bit down here. And that's where this bit's gonna come in, the pro bolt bracket. And what I think I'm gonna do is that's gonna fit onto the, the oiler like this. And then I'm gonna use this bracket in the place of this washer here on the SW Motec engine guard. And that will allow me to mount this thing exactly there. Nice and accessible, out of the way. It's actually just gonna look like it's an extra big brake fluid reservoir on the wrong side. I think that will fit into the look of the bike nicely there. So I'll just start with loosen off this bolt. So take the bolt out, refresh the thread lock, and then instead of this washer, I'm going to use the pro bolt bracket. So go through there and back into the frame. And then obviously I'm going to fix the oiler onto the bracket here with the longer little bolt in the kit, one of these star washer jobbies through the oiler through the bracket, little star washer on the back, and then one of the nylock nuts. I'm just gonna nip that tight for now. So get some positioning done. Gives us enough space to get the lid on and off. A little bit concerned about the angle that the hose is gonna take though. Alternatively, leave the bracket where it is, and then from our little kit here. Use a little right angle piece to stand the whole thing completely off from over the chain so there's no danger of any inter interference whatsoever. That might be the better idea here. And then also the oiler itself is going to be hiding the bracket as well to make it even neater look. That's what we're going to do. The big screw into there. Little right angly bracket thing. Nylock nut onto that. Little bolt through the right angle goes into the pro bolt bracket thingy and then a nylock nut on the back of that. And there we go. The oiler isn't hanging down directly into the chain and I don't think, to be honest, that the swing arm is going to move that much that this chain gets anywhere near that bit. Right, so with that in place we can tighten this up. So with that nice and solid we can move onwards which means we need to move back to the rear end now. Also unpack our hose piece here and in this pack we have obviously a piece of hose one end of it has a piece of metal in it and the idea of that is so that you can bend this into shape and define where exactly the oil is going to go onto the chain but also in here is the actual application nozzle and before we can go any further we need to stuff this into the hose and there is actually a little piece of black tape or shrink wrap or something around the end to show you that that's the end with a barb on it and this needs to go into the hose so that it locks itself into place. It's quite tight, but we just poke that in up to the black bit. And that's now in the hose. And this is ready to be mounted onto the bike. In the little hose clamp kit here, we've got four little sticky back clamp thingies that we can use to run the hose in. We could also use one of these as a basis point with the hose stuck in that. And then from that, we can angle this to wherever we need it to be. And it's gonna be relatively solidly fixed. Alternatively, here at the back of the swing arm, just before the sprocket, there is actually a shark fin or a toe guard or whatever you want to call it, which is here to obviously protect you from accidentally stuffing your toe in between the chain and the sprocket and having your foot torn off while you're riding along. But this can also provide us quite a handy mounting position from which to mount our little feed hose. But obviously there's nothing to mount this on, so what we need to do is actually, against my better judgment again with a brand new bike, yeah, to drill a couple of little holes in this just so we've got some mounting positions through which we then have the ability to use a couple of cable ties and fix this hose onto this shark fin piece. But rather than drilling a hole into this while it's mounted to the bike with the danger of 
somehow damaging something, I'm just gonna take this thing off, just to be safe. All right, so that's that off. So we're gonna quickly take this to the engineering workshop. I'll be back in a second with some holes in it. All right, so I've been in the engineering workshop, AKA the kitchen, and as you can see, tiny little hole here, and instructions from Tutoro actually have two holes on this piece so that the, the pipe kind of goes along this bit, but I've taken the executive decision to put the second hole here in the corner, hidden out of the way, so that my hose, if you look at it from the back, will be fixed here in this corner, but then will come up over this plastic piece and be hidden out of sight for when it disappears into the bike. So in our little bundle of cable ties, and there is a mass of different sizes, big fat ones, medium sized, and these little thin ones are the ones that I want for right now. And what I'm gonna do is thread this through the hole, make a loop, thread it back through that same hole, and then tie it off. So now we've got the first loop that we can stick our hose through. And that cable tie can't escape. Can trim that off in a minute. Then exact same trick for the second hole. Now we've got a second loop. So now, from behind, hose goes through the first cable tie, then through the second one. I'll tighten them up just enough that they can hold that in place, but I can still move the hose around to reposition. Same on the front there, and then thread lock onto the bolts because they had thread lock when they came out, and then fit this shark fin thingy back onto the bike. So now, pull this hose through those cable ties till we get it in roughly the right position. And ideally, we would want this to be mounted so that the feed tube is just in the crook of the step there on the sprocket. The problem here is, because of the way that this has all been done, the bolts are actually really far outwards. So if I have it there, the bolts are gonna be continually catching on that feed tube. So what we're gonna actually need to do is to pull it through a little bit further and just have it positioned so that it's lightly touching the flat surface of the sprocket there. So that as the sprocket nuts go by, they're not bothering it at all. I'm just about happy with that position, so I can tighten off this cable tie. That is now solidly fixed, and then using the wire that's inside the hose, I can bend that over so it's giving a tiny little bit of resistance on the sprocket there. I'll check once again. Yeah, the nuts aren't gonna bother it as they spin around. There's nothing worse when you're running along then your nuts getting in the way of your hose. So then I can also tighten off this second cable tie. And then to start with, our hose is fixed in position. I mean, it wants to wriggle around a bit because it's still not fixed here, but I'm gonna start by fixing the first mounting point on the swing arm by here, just to make that whole assembly much stiffer. But first, I need to run the whole hose all the way around the swing arm and then into the chain oiler here. And then after the swing arm, what I'm gonna do is to cross over underneath this chain guard where it's slack here, and then go forwards around the front of the swing arm pivot. Pivot. Hopefully you can at least see some of this. And then using another cable tie, I can fix the hose onto this cable, which is coming back here to, imagine probably something to do with the ABS. So there you can hopefully now see that I've Touch that cable tie there, tighten that off. Not completely, because we still want to be able to move it a bit. So now that the hose has gone all the way around the swing arm pivot, we've essentially eliminated the problem of the movement of the swing arm needing the hose to get shorter and longer because it's now going to move with the swing arm. And also, by fixing the hose up high up in there, we can now make sure that everything stays well away from the chain down there. We can also make sure that this hose loops up here to the ProVolt bracket jobby before hooking into the unit. And there's no chance that this hose is going to be getting caught up in any way with the fast moving drive chain, which is going to be winging its way past it below there. But first, we'll come back to the rear end. In our little kit, we have two Robinson Healthcare pre-injection swabs. Obviously, alcohol is alcohol, kills germs, but it also gets rid of grease. So I'm going to put one sticky pad here and give that a nice alcohol wipage. I'm going to stick another one here. Be quite good. If I can stick one under here as well, just to hold that once again away from the chain. Oh, this could not be more awkward. Clean a nice big area, and then wherever it lands, it lands. I don't think it's going to be a very surgical strike, to be fair. Okay, so first sticky pad. Exactly there. Into which clip the hose. Now, because of having done that, 
This is a lot more solid. It's not going to want to move around anymore. And second sticky pad. Right there. That's not sticking at all. It's not even close to sticking. Right, there's one sticky pad down. It's a shame. Just touched it with my fatty fingers. Try that again. Take two. A good hard press. Yep, that's more like it. Put those into that. And then to try and get one into there. Gonna be a challenge. Try and use a bit of ingenuity here. Stuck. Hose into that. Yes. Now we've got the hose coming from the sprocket, around the shark fin thingy, coming along the bottom of the swing arm, ducking in behind the chain guard, and then it disappears off around the front of the swing arm pivot that you can't really see from here. So back to the top again. Inside here, I've left a little bit of slack because I want just that last little bit of movement of the swing arm to be taken up by the, the loop of the hose there. You can tighten that. Cable tie all the way, clip it off, keyhole surgery style, and then bring this hose up to the bracket there. Cable tie that into place. It can't slide up the bracket because the thing is tapered. And we just need to get enough hose to get a nice gentle-ish loop into the oiler. Cut this off, moment of no return. Poke that onto the nozzle. There we go, that is installed. Pretty much all of the fitting finished. Thing is in place. We've got plenty of clearance between the oiler and the swing arm and the chain down there. A little bit slack in the dark in there, which you can't possibly see to take up the movement of the swing arm. I think we should be good. So now we just need to stick some oil in it so that the chain is getting it where it needs it the most. So obviously for this step, we need some oil and we need somewhere to put it. So to start with, take the lid off and there's the, uh, the weight for the valve as far as I know. Take our bottle of 500 milliliters of Chaturo motorcycle chain oil and then pour it into the oiler. And there is a max fill level here shown by the sticker there, which is actually a little bit difficult to see when you've got the covery thing on. Put the lid back on. We turn the flow control valve four turns counterclockwise Tell by the little red dots, so that's one, two, three, four. That's now in the priming position. So now we take our Tutoro priming magnet, stick that on top of the oiler. As if by magic, look at that, the oil starts to come out. Hopefully it's got enough beans to get over that U-bend there. By Jove, I think we've done it. So what the magnet's actually doing is it's lifting the valve up, which normally would be lifted by the vibrations of the movement and the engine of the bike, in order to let this prime. But it's just so nice that there's been no connection of any kind of electrical or vacuum anything onto the bike. I haven't had to chop or irreparably damage anything, well, except for maybe this shark fin thing, but one little hole that you can see I think I can live with for the sake of vastly extended chain life. And then after a couple of minutes, look at that. The oil is coming down underneath the swing arm now. Last little push, so it pops out onto the sprocket and ultimately onto the chain. Lovely stuff. Quickly turn this off. And that is now primed. So there's oil all the way from the oiler down to the rear end by the sprocket. And the recommended summer setting for temperatures of about 20 degrees is half a turn open. So anti-clockwise, half a turn. I'll leave it at that, see how I get on. Obviously, if it's a colder day, you can open it a bit more. If it's a hotter day, you can close it a bit. And there is also a different oil called plus 25, which is obviously for hotter temperatures. So the oil is a lot thicker at ordinary room temperature, which means that when it's much hotter, it still gets the same viscosity. But then obviously, last step, take the magnet off, closes the valve again. This now won't work until the bike is running and uh, we're good. That's the installation finished. So there we go, that is the Totoro automatic chain oiler fitted to my Honda CB1000R. This thing is now gonna be running beautifully with a perfectly and consistently continuously oiled chain, and I expect many thousands of happy miles out of it. Huge thanks once again to Totoro for sending me this oiler to try out on the bike. I look forward to showing you guys how I've gotten on with it. Thank you so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, 
give it a big fat thumbs down. Either way, if you've got something you want to talk about, leave a comment down below and I will do my best to get back to you. I've been Andy Mancam, this has been my Honda CB1000R, and that is the Totoro Automatic Chain Oiler. So there you go, keep your shiny, keep your chains in good nick, and I will see you next time. Ta-ra!